To get a 100 kilogram man, that's 220 pounds, hovering above the ground at a distance of one meter, you would need less than 3.8 picograms of excess electrons, half of them in his feet and half of them in the ground. Although, to be fair, you probably wouldn't end up hovering above the ground, you'd just die as the electrons rush through your body to get away from each other. Most people really don't realize just how strong the electromagnetic force is. When you think about the most powerful things in nature, you look up into space and think about black holes or neutron stars. And while the gravitational pull of a black hole is undeniably immense, gravity in and of itself is nothing compared to the electromagnetic force. The reason why gravity dominates at the large scale is because, well, it all works the same. There's no negative gravity, at least as far as we can tell. With electric forces, however, direction depends on charge. Nature is able to smooth itself out, and by the time you get to the human scale, it's really not that noticeable anymore. And that's even less so when you start talking about planetary distances. And you had better be glad that it smoothed itself out like that. Sure, electricity is what powers your house or gives you the ability to think, but those are still relatively small charges compared to what could be. Think about this, for example. Take a cube of iron that is 7 kilometers long on each side. Now, that might seem pretty big, but keep in mind that the core at the center of the Earth, which is made of mostly iron and nickel, is over a thousand kilometers in diameter. This block of iron here is very small, and also considerably less dense. Now, from this block of iron, take all the protons out and put them in the sun. Now, keep in mind that the sun is huge. This only represents a mass increase of 0.0000000000063%. In terms of gravitational pull, nothing changes. Now, if you've never studied this stuff before, this might seem like a fairly reasonable situation to be in. I mean, yeah, that's a lot of protons, but I mean, the sun is huge. It still has basically the same number of protons. And why would we expect something so big to have the exact same amount of protons and electrons? Surely it has a little bit more of one than the other. And, well, I mean, at this scale, this many protons is a little bit. But as it turns out, even with so few extra protons, you would have an excess positive charge more than strong enough to rip electrons from their valence shells all the way here on Earth. And that's of course assuming that the sun isn't immediately ripped apart, as that much internal repulsion would certainly be detrimental to its existence. I mean, can you imagine the molecules in your body suddenly being ripped apart as the electrons that bond them together fly off into space because the sun has less than a one billionth of a percent more protons? That is just absolutely insane. So yeah, when you say that electrons and protons are pretty evenly distributed throughout the universe, it means they're pretty evenly distributed. The power that is between electrons and protons is absolutely insane. And I hope that watching this video has convinced you that, yeah, okay, electrons and protons are way stronger than I had thought. As cool as black holes are, you really gotta give some credit to the small scale, because that's where things get crazy. If you learned something new today, I invite you to press the like button down below, and if you enjoyed the video, I invite you to click on one of these end screen videos now.